Following the Second World War, there were a number of war crimes trials that took place to bring justice to those who committed atrocities during the conflict. The most high-profile trials took place in Nuremberg, where the remaining members of Hitler's Nazi government and Inner Circle were brought to justice. But many other trials took place. For example, specific trials were held for those SS guards arrested at concentration camps and doctors' trials took place, punishing those responsible for human experimentation. Even industrial conglomerates, who built objects used for the German war effort, were brought to trial, but today we look at one man who was responsible for the deaths and murders of thousands. Kurt Daluga was a man brought in to serve as a deputy protector for Bohemia and Moravia, as he was deemed brutal enough to inflict horrific reprisals following the assassination of Reinhard Heydrich. He was a terrifying man who inflicted much suffering. Today we look at the vengeful execution of Kurt de Luger, the butcher of Ladis. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Kurt de Luger was born on the 15th of September 1897 in Kreuzberg, a town in Upper Silesia. Little is known about his early life, however he began to serve inside of the Prussian army in 1916 and he saw service in the First World War. He first saw action on the Eastern Front before being fast-tracked to becoming an officer and after his officer training he was transferred across to the Western Front. During action here he was badly injured in the head and shoulder and during a stay in hospital it was stated how he was 25% disabled showing how he was suffering from his wounds. Following the war he was decorated for bravery but he also then began to work as an engineer and he became rather political and joined a number of organisations. De Luga joined the Upper Silesian Self-Defence and became their leader. This was a group of veterans from the First World War who began to come into conflict with Polish people in the Upper Silesian region. While studying engineering in Berlin, he also became a member of the Fry Corps, who were a group of veterans who were unhappy with the Weimar Republic, and the paramilitary group who were often armed served as a threat for the post-war German government. It was at this time that Adolf Hitler was conducting many speeches for the Nazi party, and he became the leader in 1921. The Nazis' influence initially was small over Munich, but word of mouth would spread the party's support, and in 1923 De Luga joined the Nazi party. Following the failed Munich Putsch of 1923, when Hitler tried to take control of Munich and get declared the president of Germany, the leader was thrown into prison for a short time. But De Luga was not put off, despite efforts to suppress the party. He became involved in the Berlin Front Barn, a restructured organisation of the SA that had been banned following the putsch. In 1926, following the lifting of the SA's ban, de Luga joined and he became the leader of the Berlin SA detachments and also became interlinked to the hierarchy of the Nazi party. He also became the deputy for Joseph Goebbels and with this he became rather popular. It's clear that Hitler must have valued him as he was told to resign from the SA and to join the SS instead. This would prove to be a good decision as four years later the SA would be purged during the Night of the Long Knives by the SS. Inside of the SS, Kurt de Luga's responsibilities were to spy on the SA, report of any signs of discontent between the stormtroopers and the Nazi hierarchy and also to keep a close eye on the political opponents of the Nazis such as communists. He was involved in keeping the SA under control as in August 1930 a Berlin SA leader organised a group of the brown shirts to attack the Berlin party headquarters of the Nazis and the SS led by de Luga defended it and this was celebrated by Hitler. He recognised de Luga in an open letter stating SS man your honour is loyalty, my honour is loyalty which became the SS slogan. He was then promoted and took control of the SS in northern Germany with Himmler overseeing the southern units of the SS. With this, it's interesting to look at a comparison between Himmler and de Luga. Himmler later would become the Reichsführer SS, and arguably the most powerful man in Germany behind Hitler, but de Luga's reputation is less known. He continued to achieve more power in Germany, becoming a member of the Reichstag, and also he became the overseer and boss of the General de Polizei, the non-political police. During the Night of the Long Knives, the purge of the SA, De Luga was incredibly ruthless against his former allies and friends and he considered them a threat to society. He began to transition the police institute to become a rather Nazi police and began to instill the ideologies onto them. 
his influence grew, and eventually his power over the uniformed police went from Prussia to the whole of Germany, meaning all forms of the police force, from the railway police to the coast guard, to even the broadcasting police fell under his leadership. He restructured many of the departments, and later Himmler appointed him the chief of the Orpo, the Ordnung Polizei, which cemented his position as being in charge of almost all of the uniformed police under Nazi lands. By the outbreak of the Second World War, he had control of around 120,000 active police officers, and they were not just your normal police officers, they were brutal and were known for violently policing the state. As the Second World War carried on, he continued to take an active role in brutal actions. In 1941 he was present in a number of mass shootings of Jews in Poland and in Belarus, and also he was involved in the deportation of Jews. He signed orders for Jews to be taken from Germany, Austria and Bohemia and Moravia and moved into ghettos. He was also present during a conference where Himmler debated the idea of expanding Operation Reinhardt, the secret Nazi operation to murder Polish Jews in Poland, and other lands that fell under the control of the Nazis. He evidently supported these policies, and did not stop any of them. But it was inside of the Czech Republic that Deluga really showed his brutality. Following the assassination of the Reich Protector for Bohemia and Moravia, the butcher of Prague Reinhard Heydrich, brutal reprisals were ordered by Hitler on the area. De Luga succeeded as a deputy protector in 1942, and Hitler had been persuaded by Himmler to put De Luga into this position. A state of emergency had been declared after Heydrich's death, and scores of people were executed in reprisals, even when the assassins had not been found. It was decided that revenge would be had on the area, and it was reported from Hitler that he commanded a huge number of brutal reprisals for any village found to have harboured Heydrich's assassins. These orders were to execute all adult men, transport women to concentration camps, gather up suitable children for them to be placed in SS families, and to finally burn down the village and level it. De Luga, along with SS officers, ordered the villages of Lidice and Lazaki to be razed to the ground, with these policies being brutally carried out. Inside of the villages, when the Nazis rolled in, there was complete terror. Lidice was chosen as its residents were accused of hiding partisans, and inside of them all of the men were rounded up and taken to a farm on the edge of the village. Mattresses were taken from the houses and were stood up against the wall of a barn to prevent bullets ricocheting off. The shooting began at 7am on the 10th of June 1942, with men being shot in groups of five. This was deemed to be too slow, and then the firing squads began to shoot men in groups of ten. Only three male villagers survived. 203 women and 105 children were taken and transported to a nearby grammar school. Children were then taken from their mothers, and then the mothers were later loaded on trucks to be taken to concentration camps. Many of the children who were not chosen for Germanisation were sent to Helmno concentration camp, where over 80 were gassed inside of gas vans. The village was then burned to the ground and the buildings were destroyed with explosives. Pets and working animals were also slaughtered, and the Germans even dug up the remains of those interred in the town cemetery, and even looted some of the remains for gold teeth. Lasaki was destroyed two weeks later, when a radio transmitter belonging to the team who parachuted Heydrich's assassins were found. Deluga was ultimately brought in into Czechoslovakia, as a previous man Hans Frank had not carried out sufficient brutal reprisals, but Deluga was seen as a worthy sadist to complete the job. He continued in his roles until May 1943, when he suffered a huge heart attack and almost died. In the months after he was relieved of his jobs and offices, and was gifted a large property by Hitler. However, in May 1945, de Luger was arrested by British soldiers in Lebec, in northern Germany. He was then taken to Luxembourg before he was extradited to Czechoslovakia, to be tried for the crimes against the people who he served in his role as protector. He was placed on trial for his crimes against humanity, and throughout the trial he was ignorant, and said three million police officers venerated him. He claimed he was only following the orders of Hitler, and said he committed no crimes. He was sentenced to death being convicted of all charges. The day after his guilty verdict, he was executed by hanging. Inside of the walls of Pankrak prison in Prague, which during the Nazi occupation was a Gestapo investigation centre, he was executed. He was led out of the prison into a courtyard, and outside where hundreds of spectators had gathered to witness De Luga's death. 
The crowd was made up of members of the public, as well as guards, and when he was led out, he was flanked by them. He was then led to the execution pole. He was not executed using a gallows or a trap door. This pole method was mostly used in Czechoslovakia, and it was where a rope was passed for a pulley at the bottom of the pole. Then the condemned was hoisted to the top of the pole by a sling, running across their chests. A noose was then placed around Deluga's neck, and when the chest sling was released, he jerked downwards, and then his head was guided down by the executioner's own hand, and it dislocated the neck. Deluga suffered this fate, and there was a huge amount of people there to witness his death. His hanging and execution was performed efficiently, and within minutes of entering the prison yard, he was declared dead. Kurt Deluga was responsible for the massacres of hundreds during the Second World War, and the brutal reprisals following the assassination of Reinhard Heydrich. He is remembered as the chief of the Uniformed Order Police, that served the Nazi party with ruthless efficiency, and worked with other guards to instill fear into the people. He was guilty of a number of crimes, but what's clear is that he had little remorse for his crimes, going to his execution as staunch a Nazi as he was when he was serving Hitler. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.